कांग्रेस हैड इन यूपी 42 परसेंट बीएसपी हैड एट 2.4 परसेंट नाउ वेयर इज द कांग्रेस टुडे एंड बीएसपी हैज अक्रॉस 30 परसेंट वन थिंग रिमार्केबल अबाउट द जर्नी ऑफ द बीएसपी वी शुड नो इज दैट बीएसपी हैज कंसिस्टेंटली इंप्रूव्ड इट्स वोट शेयर एंड द नंबर ऑफ द आइदर एम पी द्वारा एम एल एज कंसिस्टेंटली नाइनटीन एटी नाइन वी हैड ट्वेल्व एम एल एज इन यू पी एंड थ्री एम पी टू टू एम पी फ्रॉम द उत्तर प्रदेश वन एम पी फ्रॉम द पंजाब सो नाइनटीन एटी नाइन वी हैड अ थ्री मेंबर ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्स लास्ट टू थाउजेंड नाइन इलेक्शन वी हैड अ ट्वेंटी वन मेंबर ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट दैट इज द हाइएस्ट नंबर सो फार सो फार In 2007, again a remarkable history. As we compare the social history of the entire country, non-Congress governments, because BJP is the latest phenomena, because after 1980, before 1980 you had a two non-Congress governments. One is the left government in Kerala, Kerala, which was demolished by the Nehru in 1957-58. And second, we had a government in 1967 in Tamil Nadu under the leadership of Anna Durai. These two governments were only the non-Congress government. Now they were non-Congress government, but they were also non-Ambedkarite governments. That is very important. They were not the products of any Dalit movement or Ambedkar movement. Neither a left movement led by Nambudri Padi in Kerala or Anna Durai. a dk or dmk that time a movement led in uh, tamil nadu they were neither dalit movements nor ambedkarite movements they were non brahmin movements in tamil nadu and cpm movement we cannot say non brahmin it is another phase of again uh, uh, status quo is political parties benji's entry in the politics again mayawati ji today know everybody as a big leader but nobody knows how she has struggled taking a charge of from one small district of bijnor in the uttar pradesh to now she is in charge of the entire country who has naturally inherited the political legacy of the kanshiram sahab and kanshiram sahab was also frank enough to nominate his political heir when he was alive because that is also rare thing normally in a politics nobody appoints his political heirs while alive and kanshram ji was in a good health but he was thinking because he, you look, you analyze his speeches he always speaks the movement should transform and transfer from generation to generations today i am alive tomorrow i may not be but the movement should be there i may not be alive tomorrow but the movement should go on and did this kind of a thing therefore he was a big visionary man uh, uh, self sacrificing man and therefore he could take this bold decisions and therefore he appointed a banji as a political heir now she has also struggled along with kanshiram sahab in a several agitations programs whether it is elections all kinds of the process she has also undergone now we have reached the stage in 1996 we became the national political party first time now this national political party you become on the basis of your vote strength your success in electoral politics the problem of dalit movements throughout the country is dalit movement operate as a prominent socio political force but not the electoral force and that is the one biggest obstacle uh, in the process of dalit movements in the entire country so you can be even in maharashtra a buddhist or dalits they are the prominent force but they are not the prominent electoral force in tamil nadu 20% dalits a very vibrant a uh, group of the dalits in uh, tamil nadu especially dominated by the north tamil nadu but they again they cannot convert that whole entire dominant group of dalits into a political force it is a social force to that extent we can accept here kanshiram ji made it entry that baba sahab wanted to capture the power through the vote power and vote power was so far neglected by the all dalit politicians and organizations kanshiram ji brought this importance of the vote power in a entire electoral politics or dalit politics and he articulated strongly and therefore now as on today 
After 1996, we became the first party to become a national political party. So, in entire all political parties of the Dalits, BSP is the only national political party according to the rules and regulations of the Election Commission of India. And therefore, Illempert symbol is reserved for the BSP except Assam because Assam that uh, AGP had a elephant symbol before BSP and therefore that cannot be taken away as per the rules and regulations. And therefore, 1996 we attained the status of National Political Party, 1996. Now that time we were at number 5 in a national political parties. Now 1996 we attained the status of a national political party, today we are in 2013. We have retained that status by our electoral performance in each and every election. Now 1996 to 2013, almost this 13 and this 4, 17 years. BSP has not lost a national political status. Many parties have lost, even JD, led by Devi Gowda, they have lost. CPI have lost, NCP has lost, even CPM now losing. They have lost, but BSP has continued the status of national political party. 1996, we were at number 5, now we are at number 3, next to Congress and BJP. So, in a sum and substance, today, BSP led by the Bahanji in terms of the vote and in terms of the parliamentary strength. It is the number three political party in the national politics. Number three. Now, this is not only the political achievement. Our achievements are in a multidimensional nature. For example, Dalit identity politics. BSP has established now. Whether you call it as a Bahujan or Sarvajan, but basically establishing the Dalit identity in the Indian politics, credit goes to Kanshiram Sahab Bayanji. It is a very well. Not only that, but as I told you, that uh, new rules of the governance, introduction of the new rules of the governance, because Bayanji has done experiments or the Kanshiram Sahab earlier or short term governments. We have done a lot of experiments. For example, the each and every community should get a share in a governance according to their proportion of the population or another reservation in a private sector. That is the Bayanji's biggest achievement when she was in a government or even an introduction of affirmative action program which is in America. Even a private contractors and even the private players should introduce the reservation sector in their own establishment. Benji introduced in Uttar Pradesh. Not only that, the distribution of the land, which normally uh, talk of a uh, talk in a Dalit politics or Dalit movement, biggest distribution of the land when Benji was in power, regularization of the lands which were in the possession or possession or occupation of the Benji, uh, Dalits, they were all regularized. That is the big achievement. Now, when we compare with the today's uh, food security bill of the Congress party, how we analyze it, and you have to understand here, a food security bill and all these kinds of the phenomena, they are a devices of keeping the Dalits in the same threshold of the caste and the village. Whereas, Bawasa wanted to these people to get out from this kind of the systems. And therefore, they will not give a land. They will give you food to eat so you can stay there and you can serve them as a cheap bonded laborer in the villages so that feudal system, caste mechanism can survive. These kind of things which they are following. So, apart from this, even uh, as I told you, the big memorials in the name of the national heroes constructed by the BSP. Now, many people, they have their own perceptions about it. But we know very well, Bayanji used to say openly, when the Nehru Gandhi Congress government in the country, they create the number of the memorials in the name of their Gandhi, Nehru and so on and so forth. They have every right to do. When we come to the power, we have every right to create a memorials in the memory of our heroes. Whether it is the Baba Sahib, whether it is the Periyar, whether it is the Sri Narana Guru, whether it is the Phule, whether it is the even Guru Ghasidas, even it is the, even a Birsa Munda or Ravidas, 
we have every right bsp has utilized that historic opportunity in a institutionalizing our own history because after even a 5000 years if somebody want to trace the history of dalit empowerment you have the ambedkar memorial you have the kanshira memorial you have the buddha or you have the buddha university in noida now these are going to be our evidences for the generations and generations that what we were or what we have created <coughs> and therefore it has a very big value now when we say big value you have to understand this in terms of uh, dalit liberation now many people think that dalit liberation means to give a scholarship and give a job that is a very simplistic way of understanding or uh, explaining the dalit uh, liberation dalit liberation is a basically a psychological phenomena it is a psychological event dalits are all down trodden or the backwards they need a psychological rehabilitation they need a psychological empowerment and psychological empowerment comes from such institutionalization of our victories our success and therefore a small statue why it is the inspiration of the people a small even a god who is in the stone form why it is the inspiration for the thousands and the lakhs of the people because that is the model that is the model which becomes the source of inspiration for the millions so our people also dalits backwards minorities they also need a some kind of a psychological inspiration and our this monumentals or this uh, memorials this they provide it but you know media in in this country it has its own perception especially media was never friendly to pre ambedkar period and it is never friendly in a post ambedkar period because media is the creation entirely in this country of the same people who operate the system who enjoy the system and therefore even uh, in a gandhi ambedkar struggle baba saheb ambedkar he never had a, a, a successful media backing to him otherwise he could have been again travel much far ahead but he could not get it the support of the media and that was but natural because ambedkar discourse kanshiram ji discourse or our discourse is basically anti establishment